So I asked you a couple different ways this morning what your plan was against Matt. And I don't feel like I got a really like specific uh, answer yeah. <laughs> in a nutshell. Like if you had to write a thesis sentence on like how you were playing Matt or trying to beat Matt, what, what would that be? And if you don't have one, just say you don't have I one. I don't really have one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it feels to me like you're just like, oh, I guess I'll hit it over there. And oh, maybe I'll hit it over there. And I'm kind of running this way, so I guess I'll hit it over there. Yeah. And there's not really any um, pre-planned uh, attack plan. Yeah. So we're going to give you that. Okay. So um, first of all, it's fantastic that you're mindful of your uh, positioning. Uh, you understand already that when you hit a ball on that side of the court, that you need to get yourself to this side of the court, right, right. correct? Yep. And so I saw like very intentional uh, effort on your part to get yourself to the correct spot. Yep. Uh, so that's great. I like, guess a really good starting point. So that being said, if you know you need to position yourself uh, slightly over to the other uh, side of the court, and let's say the ball uh, lands here, and you are positioning yourself for a forehand, and you basically have the choice. Let's say, let's say you're playing Matt, and Matt is equally positioned. Like he could equally cover a uh, shot to his forehand or a shot to his backhand. Uh, if you have the choice to either hit this target or this target, which one results in more work for you? If I, if I was trying to do the better, easier target, I'd go across court. Why? Because I'm still, I'm still in the right position. There you go. Yeah, well, after you hit to that target, where do you need to get back to? Just a couple seconds. Probably, yeah, probably somewhere like there. Yeah. And if you hit to the green target, then your re recovery position's over there. Yeah. So aiming for the green target basically doubles the amount of work you have to do before the ball is hit by, by your opponent. All right, so we're, from like here on out, we're just gonna give you a very uh, simple, easy to remember strategy. This is your plan A uh, from now on. In other words, when you start a tennis match, this is, this is your beginning strategy. Like, it doesn't matter um, how you feel that day, <laughs> what's ne necessarily working or not working, yeah. the style of your opponent, you're gonna begin with this, like, there's no decision making necessary. Right. Like, this is what you're gonna open with. Yeah. This is your strategy. Okay. From now on. Yeah. That's it. So important to acknowledge here that there are good reasons to go down the line. Right. It's not that you should only hit cross court, but there needs to be a thought process behind yeah. when you don't do that. What are some good reasons that you can think of just based on what you've learned already that it might be a good, what are some good reasons to actually go down the line? Uh, short ball. Yep. If I'm coming off like hitting them a wide, super wide shot that drag them way off the Yep, yep, they're out of position. Once you start using this mindset and you're, you have a very um, cross-court centric uh, strategy, you'll start to notice patterns that you didn't notice before. Most players have a stronger side and a weaker side. And again, some players, when you play this cross-court pattern, you're gonna have the upper hand and it's gonna be a very positive pattern for you. And against that same opponent, this pattern doesn't match up well, and it's a very negative pattern for you. Yeah. So if your opponent also realizes that, and they're trying to exploit this pattern, and you don't like it, then it might be uh, worth the risk to go down the line to get into this pattern. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we, when you watch tennis on TV, you see, you see tons of this. Well, they'll hit two or three shots this way, and then somebody will change directions, and then they'll hit two or, two or three shots this way, and then this player will be like, ah, I don't really like this. And then they'll change and, and go in this direction. Yeah. So uh, to change the pattern is a, another good reason. Yeah. It doesn't mean you smash it 100 miles an hour down the line. Yeah. 
It just means you target the other side, give yourself some time to make that extra movement so that you can go to the other, uh, the other pattern. Another one is opponent weakness. In other words, uh, if Matt's forehand over here is incredible and his backhand over here is terrible and he's hitting you lots of forehands because he would like, this is kind of the other side of the same coin. If he's targeting your forehand over and over because he wants to hit forehands, changing direction to force him to hit a backhand might be the right, the right play. Yeah. Uh, and then the last main one is um, if you just have a personal strength, like Djokovic is known for his backhand down the line. So if you're like wicked good at a particular shot down the line, it might be, yeah. you're not really allowed to use that one. No. <laughs> <laughs> that leaves us with four, four other reasons. If none of these four things are present, what do we do? Cross, hit, hit across court. Any questions? No. All right. Let's right. practice. Good ball. Good ball. Go line, go line, go line. Yeah, there you go. That's it. Does that make sense? Yeah. You see how he was hurting? Yeah. Good. Your choice. Nice, good ball. Yeah, good, good, good. Cross, cross, cross. Oh, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's grab a drink real quick. Good hitting game. Did that, did that bounce in? I, was it in? <laughs> I think so, yeah. yeah. Awesome. All right, uh, Gabe, did you notice the last like two or three minutes Matt started doing something different? All right, we're gonna, we're gonna take a look. Okay. Uh, we're gonna scroll through a couple, couple examples here. So we got a bunch of cross court balls. This was probably five or 10 minutes ago. Okay. Awesome angle. So right here, do you, do you have an advantage in this, in this exchange? Yeah. Why? This is all my own. Yep. He, he has not, the goal anytime a tennis ball gets hit is that you get to the center of what's possible next. And Matt mm -hmm. has a sharp angle covered from you. You're about to hit the ball but yeah. everything else is, is open. So if you wanted to here, you could go down the line, yep. but it's important to keep in mind Matt's shot also. Yeah, this is probably like a coin flip, I think. Like he yeah. didn't hit it short, but it's, uh, it's not like on the baseline. Right. So let's see what you did, I actually, I don't know. <laughs> nice, so you took it? Oh, I did. Yep, nice, nice, good job, good. Good read, I, I think that was totally acceptable time mm -hmm. to go down the line. Good job. All right, I'm gonna move ahead now to where Matt changed. Do you have any idea yet what uh, Matt did different? No. I'm gonna go to, just go to one where I'm pretty confident. Pretty sure this is one of them. So I'm gonna go one shot at a time and you tell me if you see something different uh, from Matt. So looks the same so far. Looks the same so far. Still looks the same. What did Matt just do? Um, hit the ball up high. Or down and the this is his first down the line shot. Yeah. We went a solid five minutes without Matt hitting down the line one, yeah. one time. Yeah. And then he started hitting down the line like every three or four shots. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, this yeah. is the type of yeah, thing yeah. like there needs to be in the, uh, this is why we're starting with, with this for a year. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> when somebody breaks that pattern, yeah. there should be like sirens going off in your head because as soon as he does break it, what, is, what does that mean? When, when he breaks the plan A and he goes down the line, what does it mean for Matt? He's probably out of position. Yep. And so what does that mean for you? 
I got an opportunity. Yep, yep. Where is Matt supposed to be? He should be over here. Exactly. Every time he doesn't follow the plan A, you have an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Unless he, you know, if he hits the ball like all the way, uh, you know, in the corner, then okay, right. fine. Like, so he hit a good enough shot. Mm -hmm. But the geometry doesn't change. Anytime he hits the ball straight, you have an opportunity to catch him going, going mm -hmm. the other way. And he did that all, he started doing that all of a sudden. And so these are the things that you need to start becoming attuned to yeah. if you want to be a good tennis player, a better tennis player, sorry. Yeah. yeah. They don't want to be that coach. You yeah, know? it's always putting everybody down. Yeah, exactly. Do you want to be good or what? <laughs> this is you and this is me. <laughs> yeah. See how I don't move my feet when I rally? You don't want to worry be like about that. that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so when you hit, like you're making contact, and Matt did fairly well. He got back to the center, but he's not where he should be. Yeah. And so it's fantastic that. Um, you just took the high percentage shot here, and look, he's not, he's not comfortable. Even though you hit, uh, sorry about that, even though you hit like a relatively standard, like it's closer to the middle than it is to the sideline, yeah. but it still, stresses, it still stresses Matt because of the way he shot himself in the foot on mm -hmm. the shot before. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah, I don't remember what happens here either. It looks like Matt neutralized it really well. Yeah, that's a, I mean, that's a tough shot. Ooh. So, are you offense, neutral, or defense here? It should be defense, and I take just a stupid... <laughs> like a laser you, yeah, it's totally you like love that. those sharp <laughs> angles, though. It's, it's the bazooka shot. Yeah, you like those sharp <laughs> angles when you're in trouble. So, if you flip things and you put yourself, put yourself in Matt's shoes right now, Matt's thinking, all right, he's got, like, the dollar signs. Like, yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh, no you're, you're way out of position. You just hit a laser over the top of the net, mm -hmm. which means you had no time to recover. And so... I think I just bumped this back, too. Yeah, I think you're right. Just kind of shovel it down the line. Oh! Then you, then, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you see what, what's happening yep. over here? All right, so because Matt hit down the line, he left himself exposed again. And you can just kind of see, he's just like, whoa! Yeah, <laughs> he's just like running. 1,000% sellout <laughs> right there. Yeah. Uh, so even though he tried to, this is where tennis gets really fun. If neither player are aware of this and both are just kind of like, oh, hit it over there. And player two is like, oh, I'll hit it over there. And player one is like, oh, I'll go over there again. And it's just like random shots. There, there's just, it's no longer chess. It's just, it's like battleship. Right. You're just like calling out like a random, yeah. uh, a random spot and like crossing your fingers yeah. that, that you get lucky. Um, now because you're starting to see these patterns, the two of you can kind of play this like game. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I'm just, <laughs> uh, but it, it's only like funny because you both kind of know what's going on. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so this is kind of my goal for you uh, when you leave Milwaukee is that now you have this deeper uh, level of knowledge of what's going on on the court and you can actually follow it. And when somebody like Matt breaks it, yeah. my goal is that you start to be like, oh, like he just left me something and you should be able to take advantage of it does that make sense let's watch that one more time yeah, keep going keep going keep going <laughs> it's like the sausage race yeah. <laughs>